going to show you now how to graph the exponential functions y equals 2 to the x and y equals 1 half to the x, as well as y equals 3 times 2 to the x. All of this will be done using a table of values. We're not going to worry about transformations or anything like that. And in order to do this, we're going to learn a couple of rules when dealing with exponents, including negative exponents and taking the exponents of a fraction. So to start out, let's do y equals 2 to the x. I'm going to make a table of values. And we'll go from negative 4 right up to 4. Our first value is y equals 2 to the x when x is equal to negative 4. If you haven't seen these before, a negative exponent indicates that you should take the reciprocal of the base. That is, we flip it over, so watch closely. Notice the negative went away, and we now have a fraction. When the exponent is a negative, simply take the base, uh, the base here is 2, flip it over, that turns that into 1 over 2, and then take the exponent. Now the second rule we need to go over is taking the exponent of a fraction. We apply the exponent to the top and the bottom. So y equals 2 to the negative 4 is the same as y equals 1 half to the positive 4, which is 1 to the 4 divided by 2 to the 4. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, that's 1 to the 4, is simply 1. And the bottom, 2 to the 4, is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. So, 2 to the negative 4 is 1 over 2 to the 4, 1 to the 4 over 2 to the 4, 1 over 16. To write that out as a decimal, we can just do the division. And it is 0 0.0625. So that's my first value here. I'm going to write it in there as 1 over 16. I like fractions better, but if you write that as 0 0.0625, you'd also be correct. I'll do the next one slowly, and then I'm going to run through them a little bit quicker. So y equals 2 to the x when x is negative 3. y equals 2 to the negative 3, which is 1 half to the positive 3. So remember, if the exponent is a negative, take that 2 and turn it into a 1 half. Now apply the exponent to the top and the bottom. 1 to the 3 is 1, and 2 to the 3 is 8, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. I see people accidentally write in a 6 quite often. Remember, this is not 2 times 3. 2 to the 3 is 2 times 2 times 2. What does that 3 mean? It means there are 3 of these all being multiplied together. That's 1 over 8. Now, 1 over 8 as a decimal, sorry, I should know these, is 0.1. So the first value is 1 over 16, which was 0 0.06, no, 0 0.0625, 0 0.065. I'll sort that out after. This is 1 over 8, which is 0.125. So notice we have these real small numbers, but they all stay above 0. y equals 2 to the negative 2, so I'm now on to this one here. y equals 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. And 1 over 4 is 0.25.
y equals 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2. That negative means we flip it. And that's the last one that we flip. So if x is negative 1, our answer is 1 over 2, which is, of course, 0.5. Notice about all these numbers, they're all greater than 0. That's a real tiny number, just above 0, but still greater. And these numbers are increasing, staying under 1, and they're all above 0. Now, here's another rule for you. You're going to like this one. If x is 0, y equals 2 to the exponent 0. You know what that is? This is a surprising result. It's equal to 1. If y is 17.4 to the exponent 0, it's equal to 1. If y is 1 million to the exponent 0, that's equal to 1. Anything to the exponent 0 is equal to 1. Sort of a funny rule. If you go into detail on all the rules of exponents, you'll see that that allows consistency amongst exponent rules. Specifically, the rule for dividing powers by each other. I'm not going to get into that in this video. We can do a, I'll do another one on all the exponent rules. So that's a 1. Now, just look in this box here. I don't need a lot of room to do these. y equals 2 to the 1 is simply 2. y equals 2 squared is 4 y equals 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And y equals the fourth power of 2 is 16. Notice these numbers are the same as the denominators. That's the bottom of these fractions here. Okay, so now I'm going to graph these. Go ahead and make my axis. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Positive 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. I'm not going to bother putting ticks down here because notice there are no negative values here. If x is negative 4, y is 0 0.06. This tiny number, it's just going to be right down there, just above 0. Again, all these numbers are real small. If we're at negative 2, it's 0.25, so that's a quarter, right? That's our 1 over 4. At negative 1, it is a half. So it's starting to rise. If x equals 0, it's a 1. If x equals 1, it's a 2. If x equals 2, it's a 4. If x equals 3, it's an 8, which is all the way up here. And 4, it goes all the way to 16, which is right off the page. Well, actually, that's also off the page, but we'll fit it in. I'm now going to connect those dots. And this is my graph of y equals 2 to the x. Notice when x is negative, we get values that get closer and closer to 0. We call that uh, it asymptotically approaches 0. We have numbers that get closer and closer to 0, but they never quite reach. So if we were to go to negative infinity this way, we'd have a flat line. That slowly makes its way up. On this side, you might want to remember it as it appearing to look like half a parabola. In fact, it's not. Key difference, right here, it does not approach a flat line. And if you were to look at the rate of change of the rate of change, you would see that it is not a, a constant value. So it's not half a parabola, but it kind of appears like, like half a parabola. I can extend that up to that dot to give you an idea of what that looks like. It just ends up taking off real steeply. See how quick that goes up? That's why people often say things grow exponentially, whether they do or not.
Okay, I'm approaching the 10 minute mark. I'll try and quickly get through the next couple here. So y is equal to one half to the x. And this is actually gonna look identical to this one, except we're reversing the list. I'll show you. So I have x values minus four, minus three, Okay, y equals one half to the negative four. Remember, negative exponent means you flip it, so that actually becomes, when you flip one half, look at this, becomes a two to the four. The negative is gone, and we flip that fraction over. So that's 16. When y equals one half to the negative three, we flip that. So that's two to the positive three, so that is eight. So this is going to be four, two, one. And now watch here. When it's a one, it's a half. I'll draw it out. Y equals one half to the one, that's simply one half y equals one half squared, that is one over two squared, which is a quarter. So that's one over four, that's one over eight, and that's one over 16. Notice it's all the same values. It's just they've switched spots. That starts at one over 16, that ends at one over 16. One over eight, one over eight, you see that? And you're gonna notice that when we draw the graph, it's gonna look like the mirror image of this one. So when I plot y equals one half to the x, again, I'm gonna just put in four. Start at zero, if x is zero, y is one. And then notice, well, I'll fold this so you can read the table. As we go to negatives, it goes up. So it goes up to two, goes up to four, goes up to 16, that would put us way up there. Sorry, eight, 16. And then as we go this way, if it's a one, we go to a half. If it's a two, we go to a quarter, and then an eighth, and then one sixteenth. Now, does that look familiar? This is the mirror image of that. Two to the x, it starts real small near zero and goes up. One half to the x, it starts really high and makes its way down. And what I tell my students to do once they've done this is take your cell phone, hold it there with your cell phone off so it's like a blank screen, hold it there and when you look at the mirror image of 1 over 2 to the x, you will see it appear to be 2 to the x. One is the mirror image of, each, of the other. Now if you have y equals three times two to the x, I'm just gonna go over this real quickly for, I'll show you how to make the table of values. And we'll make the table smaller to make it quick. We'll go minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. We follow the order of operations. Do the exponent first and then multiply. So if x is negative three, y equals three times two to the negative three. Remember two to the negative three is one over eight, so it's three times one over eight, so it is three over eight. This next one, y equals three times two to the negative two is three times one over two to the two. 3 times 1 over 4, so it's 3 over 4. 
that's going to be 3 over 2, that's 3. That's going to be 3 times 2, which is 6. 3 times 4, which is 12. And 3 times 8, which is 24. So all we're doing is we're evaluating the exponent first and then multiplying by 3. This is going to end up looking a lot like 2 to the x, except every value is multiplied by 3. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to seem even steeper than 2 to the x did. See that? It grows, it grows even faster.